I hate bananas. I actually like to eat bananas. They taste good and are good for me. My doctors told me if I eat a banana every day, I will live longer. So I do. I eat a banana every single day. It's the first thing I do every morning. I hate my job. Everyone hates their job, but not in the way I hate my job. I wish I could hate my job the way everyone else hates their job. But that's impossible. Because of my job, many things are impossible. Happiness, fulfillment, love. I buy bananas seven at a time, once a week, one for every day of the week. I never get tired of eating them, but I hate them. On day six, I wake up, go to the kitchen, eat a banana, then notice that there is only one banana left. This means two things. First, time to buy seven more bananas. Second, another week has gone by in my pathetic, miserable, lonely life in which nothing has happened. That is why I hate bananas. I've spent too long caring about nobody but myself Till you came here riding in on your high horse I don't have much of me to lose And I won't give any of it to you So kindly move along and stay the course I'm not falling for your charms Not falling into your arms No way, no how I'm not falling for your charms Not falling Reprobate. 13 across. Decree destined to eternal damnation. Nine letter word starts with re. Reprobate. It's here. R E P. I know how to spell it. Okay, sorry, just trying to help. Okay, and then the last one. Uh, from here to eternity, vexatious and sacrifice. Sacrifice is easy, I already have most of the letters. Maybe you should do it instead of me. Well, I couldn't do any worse, that's for sure. But hey, do you have the front section? I heard there was some news on ASAP. Anything? News on ASAP? Did you hear anything? Stop eavesdropping, so rude. But I overheard Andrea at Yoga talking about a press conference next week. Did you hear? Aesop is holding a press conference next I week. I don't even think Aesop exists. It's too much noise for it not to exist. Oh, it exists. But its secret is probably something dumber than the Segway. Wait, I just heard something about Aesop's secret invention. It's going to be bigger than Wi-Fi. Well, we are glad to have you here at Aesop Ruth. I'm excited to be here, buddy. You understand, considering what you'll be doing, that you can't have a social life? No friends, family, and no intimate relationships. It's not a problem. <laughs> Being a statistician doesn't get me into too many social circles. So, no close family? And you haven't had a boyfriend since? since ever. The job will last years, decades maybe, so just checking in to make sure you're okay with this. Considering the payoff? Absolutely. And just to be clear, while the payoff is incredible, the consequence for violating the rule is severe. Completely understandable. Oh, and 
Of course, this goes without saying, but no one can know what Aesop is or what we do. I mean, no one. You'll get a file every two days, and you'll have two days to complete it. Simple stuff for a gal like you. And put the facts into the algorithm, examine the odds, and make a decision. While most of the decisions are easy, the tough ones are... Well, I don't think tough is a strong enough word. Lives are on the line. I understand. Everything is to be done by hand. In the books, no computers, no electronic trail. The best way is to carry data is to go as old school as possible. Exactly. The final step is to watch this introduction video. It should answer any other questions you may have. Just look right through there. What is this? It's portable. Uh, that's on? Mm-hmm. Welcome to ASOP, a division of Iridian Dynamics. ASOP stands for Anti-Entropy Systematic Operational Program. This program began after Cotepec, an anti-aging mineral was found during a dig at the Aztec Mountains. Scientists learned this mineral stops the aging process, so anyone who takes it won't die of old age. They can still die if they are shot, fall off a building, or kill themselves. But their body does not age. So, theoretically, they could live forever. Unfortunately, only so much Cotepec was found on the dig and they haven't been able to find any more. There is only enough to create an aging cure for 88.4% of the world's population. 11.6% will not get it. The world leaders met privately and decided that a confidential program, ASOP, would be created to deal with this cure and its ethical, sociological, and political effects, how to distribute it, and who should get it. An enterprise this big needed an organization, a company, to run it. The only company big enough was Viridian Dynamics, a military support company at the time. Your job at ASOP is to determine which individuals will receive the cure and which will not, who will live forever and who will not. That is a lot of vomit. No, I don't know a place that reupholsters couches. What caused the projectile vomiting? Did you drink anything? Take any drugs? What was the last thing you ate? Sushi. Sushi can cause vomiting. Where'd you get it? From inside a dumpster. Think we are a culprit. Not from inside a dumpster, but beside it doesn't make a difference. Well, my advice is to take it easy, drink some ginger ale, and stop eating food out of dumpsters. I didn't know you worked with the homeless. He's a computer software salesman. Yeah, remind me not to go to any of his parties. <gasps> Seriously. Sorry, enough of my work. How's yours? I'm good. Necklaces are up 13%. Is that, is that good? I'm sorry, I know nothing about the boutique jewelry business. Yeah, up is always good. I just thought that since you know you make everything yourself, you know, when too many orders be bad? No such thing as too many orders. But I am worried that some of the stores are skimming off the top. Ooh, how so? Charging one price and then paying me another. It's kind of common in the boutique world, but there's no real way to check without spying on them. Oh, no, not another plan. No, no, but this one is so easy. That's what you said last time and we had to bail Stacy out of jail because she didn't follow the plan. All you would have to do is go to one of the stores, buy one of my items, and then tell me what you paid for it. I don't know. Laura, you can't turn me down. I'm too adorable. I am so gonna regret this. So, we'll go to the one on third. On third. Here two days in a row. Hopefully she shows up. Oh, there she is. Hey! Uh, I, I need your help. With 
a Sunday crossword puzzle, I, I don't think I'll be much help. Oh no, you're useless for this. Um, my dress came undone and I can't reach around to do it without making a spectacle of myself, so if you could just... It's not that hard, look. It's just a tie, thank you. Um, in, in bows? Perfect. Hey. Uh, have a seat. I'm Marie, by the way. Oh, okay. This is the part where you shake my hand, tell me your name, smile back at me. Um. Uh, I, I'm I'm Jill. I'm, my name's Jill. A <laughs> uh, pleasure. So, what do you do, Jill? I'm a relationship counselor. Oh. Well, you know, I'm having trouble with my relationship. Maybe you can help me. Um, uh, what's the trouble? <laughs> well, I just, I don't know how to communicate with him. It's like, all he ever does is take Take, take, and all he ever wants is physical gratification. You know, he wants me to feed him, love him, and then leave him alone. And the only things he likes to do are eat, sleep, play ball, and get loving from me. Oh, and lick his balls. He loves to lick his balls, especially when we have company over. Excuse me? Well, I thought he would grow out of it when he grew out of his puppy phase, but he's four now and he still licks his balls with abandon. You're talking about your dog. Oh, you only help with human relationships. Well, what I can tell you is that you will never have a better relationship than the one you have with your dog. Dogs are the greatest. Oh, funny, I had you pegged for a cat person. Ouch. I didn't mean that as an insult. It's a huge insult. Dogs are infinitely cooler than cats. And dog lovers are infinitely even more cooler than cat lovers. <laughs> okay, first, impossible to be more cooler. And B, impossible to be more infinite. It's impossible to be the grammar police and cool at all. I'm hungry. Jasper! Okay, I'm gonna have the falafel, but extra hummus at Bab Ganoush. I know. She never could just pick one. Just one is so boring. Well, I'm guessing you're more of a just hummus person. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm not really much of a Mediterranean food person. Um, how about just an order of fries? <laughs> Told you. But um, hummus is the best. <laughs> Silky, smooth, satisfying, and the healthiest. Don't you want to live long? I mean, how long do you want to live? Have you ever met someone who's lived to over 100? They all have this look on their face like, oh, just kill me, please. And I wish I ate more french fries. Yeah, I miss french fries. You don't eat french fries? I gave them up. They're terrible for you, and they take like five years off your life. Yeah, but it's the last five years, so what? I'm not gonna be peeing in a closet or forgetting my kids' names. Mm, bummer. <laughs> well, maybe ASAP will come up with something that will let me live to 100 and still eat my french fries. Yeah, well, Nietzsche argued that the eternal return was frightening. What? Nietzsche. Who? A 19th century German philosopher. He is considered the father of existentialism. He argued that the eternal return of <laughs> the eternal return is a view that since time is infinite and matter is finite, everything that happens will happen again and again and again forever. That time isn't linear, but circular. Oh. So um, the conversation that we're currently having will happen again and again and again. Correct. And then, just curiously, um, in any of these repeating future conversations, am I going to understand what the fuck you're talking about? 
Probably not. <laughs> that sucks. I am curious. I want to understand it. Maybe you can teach me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <okay? Yeah. laughs> no, this one, no, this one. <laughs> They both count. Okay, I'm ready to play poker. No, you cannot hold your cards like that. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Why not? Yeah, it? because she can see them. Yeah, oh, you give shit. us a bad name. Just mm. make it look like Sorry. you know how to play. Sorry. <laughs> I'll raise. Five dollars. Whoa, five dollars? It's a quarter ante. If you don't like it, you can fold. Mm. There has to be a rule about the size of the raise. No, it's just a friendly game. We never really made those rules. If someone wants to be a manipulative little twat mm. and take advantage of that, then yeah, there is nothing we can do. Thank you. If you don't like it, you can suck my dick. Allison! Stacy! Mm. I think Allison's bluffing. I'll call. Oh, shoot. Did oh, I play? Yeah, uh, kind of. Um, okay. I have a good hand, but I don't have five dollars. Stace. What? You can't say if you have a good hand that goes against the whole poker face thing. Right. Maybe that's part of my poker face. I'm out. Allison is just diabolical enough to not be bluffing, so no, too scary. Marie, can I sell you this bracelet for five dollars? Uh, no. First, I got you that bracelet for your birthday. <laughs> and second, it's from my fall line, so I could just make another one for like 87 cents. And third, it's already out of style. Hmm. I like it. It looks well on you. It works really well with your skin tone Thank and everything. You. Kalar coming in with a compliment. I'm just being honest. You are okay. not. You are so lying. Your whole voice and body language changes. Yeah, she's right. I mean, it's so easy to tell when you're lying. You are the worst liar, which is how I know you have nothing. So just give me the chips. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Pilar and I may not have the best poker faces, but at least we can hide when we're in love, unlike Marie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are totally in love. <laughs> but Marie is always in love, so there's like nothing to hide. Okay, honestly, I feel like this one might be different. Oh, uh, really? So it might last longer than the next pair of socks? Maybe, but I don't know. I don't want to jinx it, so I'm not saying anything. And I have to take my pills, so deal me in the next one. I'll be right back. Okay. I keep forgetting she had that kidney transplant. I know. I would literally fall apart if it went through everything she's been through. That's because you're a hypochondriac and a germaphobe. Okay. Don't listen yeah. to her, Stace. Germs are bad. Thank Who you. are? You're a doctor. You're surrounded by germs. Which is why I hate them. Okay, well... Wait till you're married, because Maggie and I are always swapping germs. Ew. Ew. See, that's why I will always live alone, even when I'm married. I want a man in my life, just not in my house, you know? That makes what sense. Do you what do you mean? I don't uh, have a man in my house. They're gross. Yeah, but yeah, they're saying, disgusting. But if you're going to be married to someone that's different, like, you, they have to live with you. No, I think I'm good. What? Yeah. What? No. I, you haven't told me what you do. Oh, I run my own boutique jewelry business. Impressive. Yeah, but heavy is the head that wears the crown. Actually, it's not heavy as the head, it's uneasy as the head. Are you sure? Heavy makes more sense. Heavy doesn't fit iambic pentameter. Shakespeare, they have three syllables, hence uneasy. Heavy is such a better word. Since the crown is physically heavy, making the head heavy via metaphorical transference. Syntax over meaning. No, I was right. Bill was wrong. Mm, yeah. Shakespeare was such a lazy writer. <laughs> oh, yay. I thought you gave those up. Uh, Jill convinced me to try them again. No fair. Now I'll feel responsible if you don't live as long. But I'll be happier. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna pass. Talk about no fair. You've inspired me to try hummus. Aww, that's so sweet. That's actually too sweet. It's like the perfect thing to say. Like what a player would say. I didn't know women could be players. Anybody can be a player. But yeah, you're right, they're mostly men. I was just trying to be nice. How does that make me a player? That's the problem. What makes players players is that they are nice. They say all the right things. They come off as kind, caring, committed, and then bam, Bob's your uncle and they leave you for someone else. Bob who? 
And what uncle? You never heard of that expression? Well, it's a big conundrum. One of the biggest I face. Impossible to tell the difference between a friend and a player. It sounds confusing. Tell me about it. <laughs> so, um, are you satisfied? With my fries? Absolutely. Just making sure you change what you want all the time. It's hard to tell sometimes. Well, I think I found something worth sticking with. I'm very happy for you. I wish you the best. We have some history. I think maybe she's still in love with me. Hmm. Yeah, she's definitely still in love with you. I can see why. Sorry if that makes me seem like too much of a player. <laughs> I could get used to this. I'm not sure if I could ever get used to this. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? There's a lot I'm not used to. Don't get offended, but am I your first? woman, that is? I once had this drunken thing with this girl at a party. But afterwards, she blamed on the tequila and never spoke with me again. Oh. Your only time? I grew up in a family where it was considered wrong, so I just never acted on it. Sorry. It really wasn't that bad. It was kind of like a bell. When it rings, it's wonderful. But it can sit and sit and sit and never ring. Eventually, it just gets used to not ringing. I can't imagine. I've been multisexual since I can remember. Is that a real thing? A multisexual? <laughs> yeah, it is now. I thought it was pansexual. As a post Wittgensteinian, I have created my own word. You remember that conversation and understood enough to throw it in my face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> I remember everything you're teaching me. That's what I love the most about you. <laughs> Do you hear that? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm glad you finally started taking these lunchtime walks. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's been good for me to get out of the office. Finally enjoy the outdoors, nature, everything. And it's, it's nice to have company. But you know, you look like a completely different person. Same old me, just not as buried in my work. Yeah, I, I really think these walks have helped. You know, I hate to bring up work, but there's this file that you're falling behind on. And it's not a big deal, just nothing to worry about. I... Yeah, I know, I, I'm sorry. It's just, 
<laughs> I've had some really tough files in this last batch. You know, I'll have them in by the end of the week. I know you will. You're Ruth. <laughs> My most reliable and trustworthy team member. Oh my god, did you read that Vonnegut book that I told you about? Yeah, Cat's Cradle. Yes, okay, so I want to start calling Andrew Ice Nine, mm. just because he kills every conversation. <laughs> what do you think? Affirmative. Are you in on it? I'm, yeah, in. okay, let's do it. <laughs> So, what do you think? About what? My, my dress. It's nice. Okay, why don't you like it? I just said I liked it. No, you said it's nice, which means you don't like it. I like it. Then why wouldn't you say so? I thought I did. Okay, so what do you like about it? What do you mean? I mean, is it pretty? Is it cute? Is it stylish? It's all those things. It's pretty, cute, and stylish. Okay, it can't be all of those things. Is it pretty, cute, or stylish? Uh, cute? It's not supposed to be cute. I have plenty of cute dresses. This one it was supposed to be stylish, you know, sexy, elegant. Yeah, that's what I meant. It's stylish and sexy. And? And I forgot the last one. Elegant. Elegant, it's elegant. It's stylish, sexy, and elegant. <gasps> Really? Yes. You mean it? You're not just saying that? Yes. I genuinely mean all the things you just told me to say. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, we're done with this? That's it? <laughs> no more? Oh, no! This will never stop, you do understand. Never? No. I'm gonna torture you forever. This is just the beginning. <laughs> you cringe every time I say it, but... We will be together forever. Trust me. Do you like it? It's nice. Ha ha. You seem stressed. What's going on? France. France? France. They're mad. About what? Numbers. There's our low. Lowest of any country, percentage-wise, but... Someone has to be the lowest. Yes, but... It's by a lot, and it's France. So? So they're threatening to pull out if the algorithm doesn't change. The algorithm is fine. It's France. Well, if they change the algorithm, that It'll means... make it a lot worse for me. And they can't change the algorithm. And they can't have France pulling out. Oh, well, I'm sure they will figure something out. Yeah, we'll see. Hey, um... One more thing, I, uh... I need you to stop seeing her.
They see everything you do. And it's for your own good. You have to trust me. I know. Can I tell her? No. It ends now. For what it's worth, I thought you two made a cute couple. I'll have today's paperwork and first thing tomorrow morning. Ruth, you can take a break for me now. I'll have today's paperwork in first thing tomorrow morning. Have a nice day, buddy. I can't believe you're still holding your cards like that. Why must you always bring up that hold my cards like this? I need to see everything. You know, whatever works for you. You're a doctor, so I guess that's surgical. Yes, it is. It is, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Marie. Call or fold. Um, I know I miss you, but I'm gonna keep uh, a fold. Are you high? You folded three tens. Over 80 cents? Yeah, I'd do anything for 80 cents. That's what the golf team said. It was the track team. I wouldn't date a golfer. <laughs> I mean, I don't think date is the most accurate verb to describe what you did, but yeah. Awesome. Okay, at least I don't have a six month role like Miss Disney Princess here. <laughs> Men need to prove themselves. Okay, but six months. Hey, for the big one. I mean, I don't think so. Even not that, except for that, never that. Well, you know, if you've been dating for a long time. I can't help it. Maggie's idea of interesting is going to the other Sioux plantation on Manchester. They do. I can't help it. What do you guys know about Aesop? What? Anything? Well, rumor at the hospital is that it either stops wrinkles or prevents balding. Yeah, why? I met someone and I think she works for Aesop. Every time I mention it, she either leaves or changes the subject. Well, you should sleep with her and then find out why. Hmm. Yeah, I want to. I can't. She disappeared. Ghosted me. Right when things were going great. Mm, so she's a she this time? Why does that matter? It doesn't, I'm just... You yeah, know you have with a Marie? problem? I, I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. It's okay, Stace. You will never understand why I like both boys and girls, and I will never understand why you like juicy sweatsuits. Ooh, they're so comfy. Same. <laughs> I don't know, I guess you must have really liked her. I haven't seen you like this since Anthony. Oh, a douchebag. Um... I'm sorry, Marie. I, I forgot we weren't supposed to mention no. his name, and then I it's okay, did. Stace. It's fine. It was a long time ago. So many versions of me ago. Yeah. What? I'll ask around the hospital, see what I could find. The rumor is, I heard it's the biggest secret since the baked moon landing. Oh my okay. God! Not that again. There is no wind I... on the moon. How did the flag fly? Uh, thank you, Kalar. But um, don't worry about it. I can handle this one on my own. It's Maggie's lawyer. You know, given what happened with Michelle. Oh, I'll be good this time. At least as good as I can be. Mm. Which is still probably not that I'm good. Not that good, but... <laughs> well, thank you. Good luck. Wait, so what do I do now? Uh, I think you lost. Over? She folded. Yes. Yeah. Not again. What is it this time, Ruth? Teacher of the Year, four times in a row, chemistry. And a transplant patient, hard automatic now. He also teaches drama. His students love him. And his kidney is gonna need to be replaced every year. You know, the Kodapec won't keep it from aging because it's not his. We've been through this. <laughs> He adopts disabled dogs and runs a doggy rehab out of his house. Okay, I would probably marry him if given the chance, but he's a hard automatic no. Okay. 
I feel like this isn't just about the teacher. I don't know what you're talking about. Ruth, we've, we've all been there. We all have needs, and if you want to talk about it... I'm fine. There's nothing to talk about. I don't have needs. Needs just get in the way. Needs cause pain and frustration and, and, and pain and more pain. You know? Who needs needs? I don't need needs. Needs just get in the way. Needs are, needs are just needs. <laughs> needs are stupid. So what's wrong? You wouldn't understand. You liked her. She was different. So different. I mean, nothing like Anthony, or Becca, or Josh. So she was smart, kind, caring, <laughs> faithful. Yes, I get it. I have had a few issues to work out, which is why I liked Jill. You know, no more cavemen, dominatrix, Wiccans. Yeah, I liked her because she was just a dork. Maggie's kind of a dork. Yeah. Not like Jill. She wears a members only jacket, knockoff. Oh, so she wants to be a member, but she's not cool enough? And she does crossword puzzles in an actual newspaper. Is she like 80? She's just a sweet, smart woman who ghosted me for no reason, which is why I'm depressed. I can't win. So find her. We, we all know you can. All your restraining orders say so. Uh, two. I only have two. That are current. OK, so I'm passionate. Sorry, is that a crime these days? Well, no, but hacking into Josh's computer network and changing all of his coworkers' screensavers to a pic of him taking a crap, that is. That was some of my best work. I should have a medal for that. I agree. But it also shows that you have the skills to find Jill. So go find her. I have no friends. No one knows where I live. Has to be them. Oh, God. About time. You can't stay. Hey, finding you was the toughest puzzle yet. Don't I at least get a cookie? I don't have cookies. Um, do you want a banana? God, no. My doctor told me to want a day. I didn't last a week. Boring. Wow. You can't stay. You can't. you found me so easily. Terrified. I mean, seriously, that was kind of insane. <laughs> like, that's not what stable, rational people do. Whatever gave you the idea I was stable or rational? <laughs> <clears throat> no, but honestly, this is the most stable, rational response I've had to being dumped ever. So I should be terrified. <laughs> no, you're the first person that I found and didn't revenge. <laughs> That's how much I love you. You love me? I gave up a week of my life to search for you. Do you love me? Yes. <laughs> You're adorable. 
Can I ask you a, a stupid question? <laughs> there are no stupid questions, just stupid people and lots of them. Why? Why? Why do you love me? Hell if I know. Okay. <laughs> if I could choose who I fell in love with, my life would be so much easier. I know why I like you, but love you, no idea, I just do. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I think it has something to do with death. Death? Give me a second, I almost have it. When we love someone, it's like we aren't important anymore. We lose ourselves. When we're single or in lust, all we care about is ourselves, our own successes, our own feelings. But when we're in love, we care about someone else as much as ourselves. Or more. Or more. So we're no longer afraid of death, or not our own death. When we're with someone we love, it's like we can never die. Or at least that's what it feels like. So love isn't about passion, it's about... Eternity. It's finding our own eternity. That's why we're so drawn to it. And why when we lose someone we love, it's like we died because we did. We lost our eternity. What if we lived forever? Huh? Like, what if we were eternal beings, we never died? Would we still love? Uh, I don't know. That is fucked up even for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nonsense. We love so we can live forever. That's it. I like that. Shit, I forgot to take my pills. What pills? My immune suppression pills. Immune suppression meaning for a transplant? Impressive. That is exactly what they're for. I got a kidney transplant, and the pills basically help lower my immune system so it doesn't try to kick my new kidney out. Bubala? What? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. just woke up, so it's morning. Where'd you get that? The counter? What? what? What are you doing? Well, I now have to go to the grocery store on Wednesday instead of Thursday because I'll run out of bananas a day early. Oh my god. Oh. <sighs> Trust me, you'll thank me. So, now that you're up, I can make you your eggs. Okay. I'm gonna make you my top secret special eggs. They're actually just sunny side up, but I do something miraculous that makes them better than any sunny side eggs you've ever had before. I, I am actually like them scrambled. 
well top titties <laughs> because you'll be getting them sunny side up and you will adore them. Okay. So what's the biggest problem with sunny side up eggs? I don't know because I like them scrambled. Runny whites. Nobody likes the runny whites, but fear not. I will make your sunny side up eggs with firm whites and still a runny yolk. It's gonna be good. Okay. Yeah. Bubala, I know you're tired, but you should really be more excited about this. So my sunny side up eggs with firm whites and a runny yolk might be the greatest scientific discovery in history. <laughs> And how do you achieve such culinary brilliance? <laughs> well, the secret is really very simple. You break the white like you would the yolk. You spread it thin so it cooks quickly. And this makes the edges of the whites crispy. Mm -hmm. Ah, voila. It's good. Go sit down and I'll bring you the rest of the breakfast when I'm done. Since you don't like my secret special breakfast, I made you oatmeal. I hope it's boring enough for you. We need to talk. I know, too, too much, too fast. I know, it's, I'm a lot. It's just, I worked so hard to find you and then I wanted to make it nice and... It's not that. Though you are, as you say, a lot. It's not the oatmeal, is it? I thought that was just a joke. No, I actually love oatmeal. Thank you. <laughs> of course you do. There's something I've been hiding from you. You work for Aesop and your name's not Jill. How did you... I'm really good at puzzles, but you're really bad at hiding things. I'm not. Absolutely the worst, which is also why I figured out from your reactions that Aesop discovered something about living longer and that because of my transplant, I won't be able to get whatever they discovered. Wow. That's... Wow. You found that all out just from my reactions. Mostly. First, you hesitated when I asked your name. Clearly it was fake. And the first time you mentioned Aesop, you immediately got up and left. And the next time you changed the subject, and every time after that, so obviously you work for them. And the first time I mentioned us being together forever, you got this lost look in your eye. And then I mentioned my condition and you got the same lost look, so it wasn't simply that. The simplest explanation, knowing that you work for Aesop, is that Aesop came up with something that will make it impossible for us to be together forever. And then the rest, I was just guessing, but how close am I? First, my name is Ruth. Second, you do not want to know how close. Yes, I love puzzles. Seriously, you don't want to know how close. That's why we have to talk. Can I just bask in my glory for a few more seconds, por favor? You got everything right, except Aesop didn't just come up with a way to live longer. They came up with a way to live forever. Forever? It seems that way. We developed a pill that ends entropy, which means people stop aging, which means people don't die of old age. Stop aging. Holy fucking mother of Christ. Ah, but, uh, but I won't get it because of the transplant. No one with a transplant. Because the transplant organ will age? So, so wait, uh, only transplant patients don't get the pill? It's made from a limited natural resource, so there's only enough for around 88% of the population. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but that's what I do. 
I use an algorithm to decide who gets it and who doesn't. That's why you broke up with me. It's, it's just part of the job. <laughs> I can't have friends, no one to blur my objectivity. Whew. That must suck. Wow, I mean, honestly, if this really happens, like, everything changes. Yeah, pretty much. That's why everything has to stay a secret until they figure it all out. Huh. Is this why you're so into philosophy? I always have been, but yeah. Whew. Listen, let's take a step back, reflect on what I told you. We'll talk tomorrow. So many questions. Take your time. Figure out your questions, organize your thoughts. Mm. You're kicking me out? Just until tomorrow. Let's meet at the park. It's a good place to talk. I don't understand the problem. I ordered them three days ago. Two dozen heirloom tomato tarts. The problem is that the pastry chef didn't make any this morning. Why not? It's your most popular item. The chef went to the farmer's market this morning and didn't find any tomatoes that were worthy of her tart, so she didn't buy any. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. You're joking, right? We don't joke about tart worthiness. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I just never thought I would hear the phrase tart worthiness out loud. Well, I have a party this afternoon that's expecting two dozen of your famous heirloom tomato tarts. What do you want me to do? I hate to interject, but have you tried their artisan avocado bacon bombs? Avocado bacon bombs? Mm -hmm. Those just sound promising. And we could pretty easily have two dozen ready for your party. Oh, looks like the chef found the avocados to be bomb worthy today. <laughs> There's no such thing as bomb-worthy avocados. Don't be absurd. <laughs> you are such a lifesaver, thank you. Oh, yeah. Just wanna make sure those soccer moms in Chesterfield get their trendy app. How'd you know the party was for soccer moms in Chesterfield? Easy, everyone around here knows the tomato tarts haven't been trending in months, but Chesterfield is the last place in town that thinks they're still hip. But why soccer moms? If it were soccer dads, you'd be getting nachos. Good point. Now, if you really want to impress me, what's the party for? <laughs> um, let's see. I'm gonna go with Caitlin is moving. Her divorce papers went through and now she's free to move to a new cul-de-sac in Chesterfield. Well, well, she's not moving, but it is a divorce party and how the fuck did you know her name was Caitlin? Uh, playing the odds. Um, there was a big Caitlyn baby name explosion a while back, so now nearly a third of all suburban women over 30 are Caitlyn's. Wow. And the divorce. Marie, what are you having? Uh, give me a second. That is Chesterfield. It is just what women over 30 do in Chesterfield. Wow. Yeah. You're even smarter than they said. Oh, who's they? Do you love her? Um, I'm sorry, who, who are you? If you love her, I don't know what to do. Marie, what do you want? Jasper, I'm busy. Listen, bitch, I don't know who... They know. They already know about us. Of course they do. They knew when I first broke up with you. No. They know who I am, where to find me, everything. I told you, Aesop is everywhere. They know everything. They approached me. When? Where? Just now, at the cafe. Who approached you? How do you know it was Aesop? It was so weird. I was online waiting for this woman. She was having an issue with Jasper. Well, ask Jasper. And I was trying to help, so we started like laughing, bonding, and then out of nowhere, she asks me, do you love her? 
What? She said, do you love her? I was like, what? And then she said, if I love you, I will know what to do. It may not have been Aesop. That is way out of character for them. Did you get her name? No. But I asked Jasper the name under the order, and she said Alexandra Corrington, but I mean, I'm sure that's not a real name. Alex. You know her? An ex? Much worse. AVP. Who? AVP. It's a part of Aesop. Just imagine a combination of the CIA, KGB, and the mob. I'd rather not. I don't know if this is good or bad. It seems bad, like really bad, like we're about to die bad. But that's not how they operate. There's a knock at the door, you open it, all of a sudden it's them and it's over. Okay, maybe something happened. Maybe she got spooked before she Alex could- Alex doesn't spook, no one at AVP does. But she used her real name she had to know that you'd find it out. You'd tell me and I would recognize it. So? I don't know. Okay, maybe she was giving us a warning, a heads up. Why? She doesn't owe me anything. Okay, I'm officially scared. We should be, but we should not panic. Okay, what should we do? Nothing. We should just wait here until they kill us? If they wanted to kill us, we would already be dead. That's supposed to make me feel better. No, not at all, but that's all we can do right now. We have to show them that we are not scared. Let's go home and pretend like nothing happened. Okay? Okay. Need I remind you of the mess you made of Germany? Every time you handle France. So. We need to be careful with Marie. Pourquoi? She's smarter than we're used to. And? And she's crazy about her. Ruth? I know. She's the Dulcinea. <laughs> Does she know? No. At least not yet. Good. I hate eliminating the smart ones. <laughs> All right. Aesop questions. What have you got for me? Okay, how long have you had this pill? 57 years. So, how old are you? 86. Funny you don't look a day over 85. Yeah, that joke got old a long time ago. Sorry. Oh, I'm gonna need a minute. That was a bit jarring. Take your time. Wait, so if Aesop has been around for decades, then that means people have died while you've been sitting on the pill. There isn't enough for everyone. People are gonna die no matter what. If we rushed it, there could have been devastating consequences. Still, it doesn't seem right. Difficult decisions have been made, had to be made. But if things continue to go as planned... Were there others before me in your long life? Others? Women like me. <sighs> no, there have not been others like you. <laughs> so besides transplant patients, who else doesn't get the pill? It's a really complicated algorithm. It's person by person, mostly, outside of those who are sick. Mentally, too? Emotionally, morally. Anyone deemed unhealthy. The key is, who will be the most productive in this new eternal society? Okay. 
so then none of my exes will get it, since they're all lying, cheating douchebags. Even the women? Especially the women. <laughs> so will people still get married? Well, it won't be against the law, but without children, I doubt many will. No children? No new children. With people living forever, we'll have to be able to control the population somehow. And people will want to age to adulthood prior to taking the pill. No one wants to get stuck at age 14 forever. God, no. What a horrible age. <laughs> Wait. What about... Talks? No! But Socrates? If there isn't enough for every human... But some dogs are more productive than some humans, right? Well, I don't want to live in a world without dogs. There will still be dogs. They just won't live forever. We'll have to keep getting new ones just like we do now, but forever. Okay, I guess that's a little better, but... I want Socrates to live forever. You know, if I can't. You know, you are taking this quite well, considering. Uh, well, I never thought I was gonna live forever, so not much has changed. But I still haven't wrapped my head around the whole Aesop thing. You have been avoiding the real reason for this conversation. I know. I, I think we both know what we should decide. I, I can't be responsible for your... There might be other options than you think. Either we break up and you live forever, or we don't and you die. There are other options. And maybe I don't want to live without you. That's very sweet, but that is bullshit. I am not worth giving up eternity for. Let me be the judge of that. Has anyone else ever given up Aesop? Only one that I know of. Do tell. Cindy. She was the receptionist at Aesop. I saw her at the front desk every single day for decades. <laughs> totally. Hey, sounds groovy. Bye. Hey, Cindy. Hey, how's it going, Ruth? Hey, no, I'm just picking up my files. Thanks. What you doing this weekend? Seeing The Exorcist. But still in theaters? <laughs> no, I'm watching it at home, my brand new VCR. Like the ones they have here? Yeah. They make personal ones now, and it was a little pricey, but I get to watch movies at home. That can't be a thing. Where have you been? You gotta get with the times, man. You know, just buried in my work. Always buried in my work. What is that thing, Cindy? Oh, that's a texting telephone. Say what? It was originally created for the deaf, but like anybody can use it. To do what? Okay, let's say you don't want to pick up the phone. So take this, put it on there, type in your message, and then the person on the other end of the line can do what you said. It's called texting. Why would anyone do that? Trust me, everybody's gonna be texting. I just don't see this whole texting thing catching on. Mm-hmm, yeah. No, I totally got it. Yeah. Okay, I gotta go, bye. We're in the roof. Another gadget? Oh, yeah, this is the Newton. It's not out yet, but I got my hands on a prototype. What's it do? Everything. Everyone in the future is going to have one of these, and it will change the world. <laughs> and then I came to work one day, and she was gone. A new girl, Andrea, replaced her, and she's been there ever since. So what happened to her? No one knows for sure. We think that she started seeing a guy, Aesop found out, and she disappeared. They killed her? 
No one knows for sure, but that's what we think. She could have easily run away before they got to her. Let's find out. I mean, if she's alive, we should talk to her about what happened and then we'll have a better idea of what we should do. No, that's way too risky, especially since they already confronted you. Remember, I'm great at solving puzzles. And like you said, if they wanted us dead, we'd already be. I don't even know her last name. Her name is Cindy. She loves gadgets. You know what she looks like. Oh, and she doesn't age. It's not that hard. Okay, well, before we go, gentlemen, I would like to have a word with you. Each of you owe me one favor, and I'm thinking I want to cash in on those favors all at once. Uh, are you kidding? You owe me like half a dozen favors already. It's like 10 for me. I lost count years ago. Yeah. Okay, well, clearly I have also lost track, but since I already owe you so many favors, maybe what's one more to add to the list? Just tell us what you want, hon. Okay, I love my friends. <laughs> and, Stacy, yeah. do you have access to old news stories? Yeah, last one I did was from 1984. I mean, basically everything's digitized now. Great. Could you look into any story about a 28-year-old blonde named Cindy? And she was really into science. Sure. Thank you. Pilar, mm -hmm. if you could look into old hospital records, anything about a 28-year-old blonde named Cindy over the last 27 years. That's gonna be a long list. I know, I'm sorry. Any and every name. And if you have pictures, even better. Okay. Allie, you're still into old gadgets and gizmos and things, right? Yeah, I mean, engineers call them vintage inventions, but yeah. Okay, great. Um, could you look into um, anything about a 28-year-old... Blonde named Cindy. Yes. Active on one of your vintage inventions message boards. Okay. Uh, what year? Like, when was she 28? Well, any and every year. It's confusing, but could you do that? People don't really use their real names, but yeah, I, I'll try. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Listen, I don't mind like helping you stalk one of Joe's ex-girlfriends, but this is getting like really weird. Yeah, this is the craziest plot you've hatched yet. And that's saying something. Yeah. No, no, this is not about stalking one of her ex-girlfriends. It's more important than that. Is this about Aesop? Oh. Yeah, you thought that she was working there. No, not about Aesop. It's just too confusing to explain. Mm. I wish you were Pilar, that I'd know if you were lying. But you can't, because I'm such a good poker player, which is why I usually take all your money. But not tonight. <laughs> you got lucky. It's not luck. I have shot. talent. I'm a strategist. Guys. What? Oh, you your cards like this. <laughs> That's a strategy because then when I win, I just go pop 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 pop, and then I win. <laughs> okay, well you did win. I'm just gonna take. This. I love you guys. Actually, this is my lucky one. Actually, my lucky one. No, 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 no. What are you guys? What are you doing? What's up, Marie? What now? You're right. She's smarter than we used to. Told you. We should really think about recruiting her. Maybe. <laughs> Eventually. But her friends are now involved. Need me to take care of any of them? No. They're clueless. And besides, Pilar is a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> conspiracy theorists make our job so much easier. Plant little story here and... And Marie has learned about Cindy. It's a matter of time. How close? Days. Maybe ours? It seems our threat didn't work. Maybe the next option. Okay, I know this is what you do best, but remember, we're the good guys. And not like last time. I'll follow orders. Good. But my way is easiest and removes all risk. Considering how high the stakes are, we really should be focused on minimizing risk. You always have been more cold-blooded than me comes with the job. Anyways, we have leverage. 
her transplant. I don't think she's one for negotiating. Oh, I think she is. Especially with what we have to offer. I hope you're right. I am. Quietly, please. Not like last time. I'm gonna get gray hairs. Is that even possible? We could have met anywhere. This isn't top circuit information. I wanted to meet in a parking garage like Deep Throat and Woodward, but I couldn't find any that were empty this time of day. You realize I'm both Deep Throat and Woodward in this situation? Whatever. What did you find? Surprisingly, quite a bit. This includes everything from Allison and Pilar as well. Wow. But uh, we weren't sure what you're looking for, so there's a good chance most of it's a dead end. No, I'm sure there is something in here I can use. And when I find it, I will tell you everything. And <laughs> it will make you more famous than Woodward. I can't wait. Have fun. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ruth, you won't believe what I just found out. Hello, Marie. Those artisanal avocado bacon bombs work magic with the soccer moms in Chesterfield. Thanks. Marie, pleasure. Chester, I have heard so much about you. Well, <laughs> actually, I have heard everything about you. Hmm. And I must confess, I am impressed. You harm one hair on her head, and I swear as God is my witness- My dear! You've been watching too many movies. <laughs> ASAP is a benevolent organization. Our goal has always been to make the world a better place. We're not as diabolical as some have assumed. I already know all about you. The pursuit of perfection can get messy. As the cliche goes, you've got to crack a few eggs before you make an omelet. <laughs> Even get rid of a few rotten ones. You know that's not what I mean. Yes, that is why we're here. I just found out less than an hour ago, and you beat me here. That's scary. As Ruth said, we monitor everything. I'm sorry, what are you guys talking about? <sighs> Do you want to tell her, or should I? Tell me what? I guess I'm gonna have to tell her. Your beloved Aesop is a scam. <laughs> it can't be. I took the pill. I know it works. That's not the scam. The scam is that they have plenty for everyone. That's what Cindy found out. She didn't meet a guy. I don't understand. Eugenics, ethnic cleansing, genocide. Proactive Darwinism. Not a thing. Survival of the fittest, thinning out the herd, whatever you want to call it. Murder. I still don't understand. When Kodapec was discovered, we immediately started working on a synthetic version. It took over a decade, but we were eventually successful. So Aesop can make as many pills as it wants? Enough for everyone? Technically. Yeah, accurately and actually. And why keep up with the list and the decisions? Mm, good question. Aesop was designed to create a perfect eternal world, an everlasting utopia, and that would not be possible if everyone got the pill. Why not? The sick, the weak, the criminal, they would just be a drain on our resources. The world would be the same, except everyone would live forever. We wouldn't improve as a society. This, this would help us improve. We are constantly improving. Why would we stop? Are we? I mean, our technology is, but are we as people? Consider the ancient Greeks and the Romans. Are we any more just, moral, profound, or do we just have cooler toys? Okay, so no one sees the contradiction in murdering millions of people in order to become more moral? It's the same problem that has plagued humanity since the beginning of time, only this time, 
We have the perfect solution. Don't you mean the final solution? We are not Nazis. Yeah, denying you're Nazis kind of means you are. We have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to build a perfect society, one free of disease, crime, and laziness. Who would want to live in such a boring place, especially forever? We didn't come here to debate. We came here to make an offer. Whatever it is, no. What kind of offer? We are not accepting their offer. We must stop them. We have to let everyone know what they're really up to. Marie, we should at least listen. I have everything loaded up, ready to send to my friend Stacy, who is a national reporter, who would love to blow the lid off this. Aesop is everywhere. They control everything. We already have counter stories to run, making whatever you post seem like conspiracy theories. But if it's out there, maybe someone will believe it. Maybe not today, but maybe over time as more people learn about it and more research is done about it. That's a lot of maybes. This isn't the first rumor that Aesop has squashed. We're pretty good at it. I don't care. I can't not do something, and I can't take your offer. We'll give you the pill. And find a way to make it work with your transplant. We'll find a way to eliminate your need for a transplant. And until then, you can have as many as you want. What about everyone else? This is just for you. But you have to promise to never reveal anything that you have learned. Ever. Yeah, I can guess the consequences if I do. So I'm taken care of for eternity, but millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people will die who don't need to. The weak and the sick will die out just as nature has intended. Marie, it's a good offer. We are not going to get a better one. I can't. I just can't. You send that? You may or may not stop it, but one thing is certain, your immediate fate. I know, a knock at the door, you open it, and before you realize. And not just your fate, but Ruth's as well. You made the right choice. Morning. I get it. It's rough right now, but it will get better. Remember, I'm the one who decides who gets it, so I've lost a lot of sleep too. You know, the one thing that kept me up most last night was trying to figure out 
how you found their secret. I mean, everything's on hard copies. Nothing is digital, nothing's online. Unless you broke into their offices, how did you do it? I was Cindy. She left it for me to find. Excuse me? Well, not me, but someone. You know how she was always into the latest gadgets, technology. Yeah, she had the next biggest thing before anyone else. Exactly. She disappeared in 1991, so the next big thing then was... The internet. Close. That was around for a few decades, but the World Wide Web was created then. And this allowed anyone with a computer to go on the internet and place something onto a server. And then it would be there as long as the server was around. So Cindy placed what she learned on a server? She placed her whole story there. How she accidentally found out their secret and was worried what would happen if they found out she knew. She wrote it all up and hid it deep in a server she created. So if Aesop never found it, how did you? They thought they found it when they found her hard copies. Remember, Aesop never used anything but old school methods, so they would never expect it would be on a server especially not in 1991. But how did you find it? I had help from my friends. They gave me a lot of info on her that I used, and then once I thought that it might be on a server, it was kind of easy. Wow. I have to say, I'm impressed. I'm just... Sad. She... She died for this in hopes that someone would find it and, and stop them. And I found it. But I'm not stopping them. I'm not even trying. <laughs> it's not fair. None of this is fair. Breakfast? <laughs> Starving. I'm tired of this battle. I need a place to rest my head. I wanna lay down these weapons, be embraced. 
dance, I wanna try to dance, I wanna move my body to your beat. Let me learn the steps, I'll do anything to be closer to your heat. I, 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 I wanna feel you close to me. I, 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 this feels like it was supposed to be. I, 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 I wanna feel you close to me. This feels like it was supposed to be. And I promise I'll give you the world I would do anything to be your only girl Give me a chance, I wanna try to stand Feels like it was supposed to be